After watching Blue Beetle, I thought to myself what would happen if Izuku had the Scarab. So I decided, you know what, screw it, and started getting to work on this little project. And oh, before I forget, the art for this video again was made by Akari. You can find her link in the description. That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys could go on and leave a like on the video, I'd be super, super appreciated, seeing as it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Anywho, enjoy. Hey, Ross, sauce it up. This story all starts off one day before the anime's first episode. In case you're wondering what that means, it's just basically the day before the Sludge Villain incident. So everything in this story is basically going to stay the same except for one thing. Hisashi Midori is actually going to have deceased recently and number two, he is also going to have been a scientist back in the day which is why he's going to be having possession over the Scarab. Now. Back then, he kind of just thought that it was nothing but a little toy or a bug or a weird creature that just so happened to die. So after trying to study it, not exactly being find out anything about the scarab, he kind of just had it there as a memento, something that he could look at as one of his very first accomplishments. He was given it to study it, but ultimately wasn't able to find anything out about it. And because it never activated due to the fact that he wasn't chosen, nothing really happened. Because of this, Izuku one day after the loss of his father was mourning and so he decided to enter his father's office, his home office that is. Once he would do so, he would end up making his way towards the case of the scarab and once looking at it, he would take it out of this case. His mother would be watching all of this go down and as Izuku would hold it, it would begin glowing. Just like in the brand new movie, it would then latch onto him and um, go inside him. Once this happens, Izuku would then be shot flying out of the building and he would begin to fly all over the place. Pro heroes all over would begin to be alerted about the fact that some person is going around using their quirk all silly nilly. However, Izuku would finally make his way back home and he would completely fall unconscious. The very next day, he would wake up and he would look up at his ceiling thinking to himself that that must not have been a dream. He then looks at his mom and tells her that his quirk must have activated and she says that she's not so sure. It seemed to have been that blue thing that he was playing around with and Izuku looks at it and it's at this moment that he would hear a voice in the back of his head. Now he wouldn't understand where this voice is coming from and so he would immediately begin to freak out. The scarab then would say, host freaking out and Izuku would say, freaking out? I think this justifies more than enough what I'm doing. And then the scarab would look at him and say, calm down, you know? Izuku from here would begin to take a couple breaths in and out, look at his back, and just scream. Inko would come into the room and say, yeah, I kind of noticed that when I talked to you in last night, but I didn't want to scare you, Izuku. And so Izuku would get his things and make his way towards school. Once Izuku would arrive, he would spend the entire day trying to keep a low profile, not exactly telling anybody about what happened last night, seeing as people were already going crazy about whoever that person was with the little scarab abilities or the blue beetle as they're calling it. And Izuku from here would go on to essentially just sit in the back of the class and stay silent. Eventually the teacher would walk into the classroom and he would go on to say, hey kids, today we're gonna be doing career aptitude tests. So get your pencils out and we're gonna be taking these. The class would immediately get saddened and then immediately the teacher would say, I'm just kidding, I know everybody wants to become heroes. Yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. So after he does this, he then goes on to pretty much put everybody on blast who signed up for a hero school, that means Izuku. And eventually, Bakugo upon hearing that Izuku wants to go to UA would say, damn tech you as he rushes over towards him and blasts an explosion on the desk izuku would be sent back flying however it wouldn't be without some repercussions because izuku from here would then be sent back flying however the scarab would activate and would surround his entire body izuku from here would look towards the direction of bakugo and the scarab would say something along the lines of host protection per Per call or per protocol or something like that right and eventually izuku would create a blaster in his hand as he would shoot bakugo flying to the back of the classroom and everybody would stare at deku saying you're the blue beetle 
Deku? And even the teacher would be shocked. Bakugo, once he would get right back up from the explosion, would get angry and he would say, Damn Deku! As he comes flying in with an explosion and he shoots one right at him. However, Izuku would form a shield in front of himself and say, Nah. Not anymore, Bakugo. As from here, Bakugo would be like, huh? As Deku would shoot a full power beam at the direction of Bakugo sending him flying out the building and knocking him out completely. This then would lead us into Izuku, Bakugo, Katsuki's mom, and Inka Midoriya to all be in the office. Now, the tension, you could, it would be so thick you could actually cut it with a knife. And let's just say that Katsuki's mom would be getting very, very angry at the fact that he sent his, her son flying out the building. And Izuku would go on to say that that's like, that's kind of unfair considering that he's been bullying him his whole life. The first time that he finally fought back, now he's the villain. He would then go on to say to the principal that that's not fair. His whole time, he's been the one who's been bullying him and sending him to the nurse. And never in those times did he get sent to the office. And it'd be at this moment that she would look at her son and say, is this true? She then looks to the principal and the principal would say, well, yes, but he has a phenomenal quirk. We couldn't let this stuff go down in his record. And Katsuki's mom would look at the principal and would begin to get hysterical saying, there's no way you could just like make this kid feel like he's the king of the universe. That's why he's like this. And she would then like bow and like apologize profusely to Inko and Izuku. And she just grabs Bakugo by the ear and drags him out. And Bakugo just looks at Deku with this look of rage and hatred in his eyes. As Deku would sit there and look at the principal and the principal would say, well, looks like you're gonna actually get a new A in the first place. You defeated him, and your story has been going viral in news. However, unfortunately, because of the fact that you did use your quirk outside of um outside of having a provisional hero license, some heroes are actually going to be here to talk to you. And it'd be at this moment that Eraser Head, Nezu, and Officer Sukachi would walk into the room and they would look at Izuku and ask him if he did what he did yesterday on purpose. Izuku would say, No, I would never. And Tsukachi would say, true. Now, Tsukachi has a quirk that is pretty much a lie detector, right? And Izuku would then go on to answer all of their questions, leading them to find out that Izuku didn't do any of those things on purpose. Therefore, charges would not be pressed on Izuku, and Izuku would then be given an offer from Principal Nezu himself to actually attend UA this following year. Izuku, once he hears that, Izuku could not contain his excitement, and he would jump up into the air as Nezu would ask him to show him the scarab. Izuku would try and he would be like, activate, but nothing happens. He's just sitting there looking like a goofball. Eventually, Izuku realizes that he has to force his Kajida to come out, and so he would make his way towards the rooftop, where he would then turn towards the, the direction of the heroes, and he would say, let me uh, try one more thing. As he jumps off the roof, and then the scarab would activate. He would fly up into the air, and Nezu would be very, very impressed, saying that because of the fact that Izuku just got these abilities from his understanding, he's going to be needing some extra training from what everybody else has had. So for the following 10 months, he's actually going to be giving him a facility in which he's going to be training him personally. Nezu would say that he sees a lot of potential in this kid, and that he can definitely go on to become somewhat of a number one hero someday. Izuku would like have tears coming out of his eyes. He's crying so much happiness. And the scarab would say, host is a crybaby. As Izuku would say he doesn't care. And from here, 10 month time skip would take place. As eventually we would find ourselves on the entrance exam. However, Izuku wouldn't even need to take it, but he would in fact insist on taking it, saying that he doesn't want any handouts, that it's not fair for him to just be given everything on a silver platter that he needs to earn it. So he takes a test, passes with flying colors, and eventually he would make his way outside. Five minutes would pass, and after all of this waiting, Izuku would get tired. As soon as President Mike would say, go, 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 Izuku would say, come on, Kajida, let's go. As he would fly up into the air, and with two blasters in each hand, he would begin to demolish these robots, using his creativity to create tools and weapons that could assist him in taking down as many robots as possible. And due to the fact that these are the robots that Izuku has been practicing with for the following 10 months, Izuku would have an uncanny upper hand on every other person, not only because of his abilities that he has due to the scarab, but because he actually has been training against these robots for months. So he would obliterate them easily, might I add, and he would go on to get an insane score of 459 points. Eventually, the zero pointer would come around and Izuku using a massive gigantic blaster that would come out from his, from his chest 
he would go on and shoot a beam so powerful that it would actually cause the zero pointer to be to slide back but ultimately it would bring its hand down and izuku would fly up into the air as he creates this gigantic massive sword like it's massive and he would slash off the head of the zero pointer causing nezu to be very impressed and clap saying I knew I made a very good choice choosing this kid and everybody inside of there would be wondering to themselves how in the world that kid is that powerful like what's his quirk all about and as it would go on to explain that unfortunately as much as he wishes it was a quirk and could be passed down it can't what Izuku has access to is something called the scarab however luckily it seems like it's alien it's an alien artifact that gives him these strange abilities and everybody would begin to freak out saying that couldn't that thing take over couldn't this happen couldn't that happen and as it would say that he has everything under control eventually the day would pass and izuku would then get an email from principal nezu telling him how phenomenal of a job he did izuku about one week later would get his entrance exam acceptance letter and after this he would find himself in ua high standing in front of the biggest door he's ever seen psych he's ever seen 10 months ago because he's already toured this place and because he has he doesn't need any help finding the building he would immediately walk inside and be one of the first before even Makugo and Ida would enter and eventually Izuku would lay his head down knowing that Aizawa doesn't really like to get bothered especially while he sleeps so Izuku would tend to keep quiet however eventually Ida and Makugo would begin to bicker and this would lead Deku to just kind of roll his eyes and sigh realizing that yeah there's no more such thing as not getting yelled at by Aizawa for First day now so eventually some girl walks over to him with chubby cheeks named uraraka and she would say hey you're the guy who used that strange ability right what's your name and izuku would look at her and say oh name's izuku as from here bakugo turned towards deku and he realizes that that's deku Bakugo would be stunned because Deku has changed a lot. He's gained a lot of muscle mass training with Nezu and using state-of-the-art technology. And not only that, but it's almost like Izuku has actually grown in height a couple of inches, like four or five. So now Izuku's a lot taller and he has a bit of a different haircut. Now, I know that the thumbnail suggests that his hair is the same, but let's just say that he changed his hair because like, why not, okay? And because he has a slightly bit of a different haircut, Bakugo almost didn't recognize Izuku. But now that he does, he would stand up out of his desk and say, Deku, of course you got into this hero school. Well, you know what, Deku? I'm going to make sure that everybody here knows that I'm better than you. And that dumb little alien technology quirk that you have is going to be saving you from my explosions. You hear that, Deku? And the scarab inside of Deku would say, this guy is an asshole. As from here... Deku would laugh and say he sure is Kajida as he would turn towards Bakugo and Bakugo would say something funny Deku throwing an explosion at Deku's face however nothing would come out because Aizawa would have prevented it using his erasure quirk. After this Aizawa would turn towards Bakugo and say one more outburst like that and I'll expel you. Problem child throw these on and make your way to the quirk apprehension test. Eventually, everybody would do so, and after everything would be all said and done, Izuku would end up getting better scores than Bakugo, causing him to get even angrier than before, and realize that not only is Izuku better than him now, but this half-and-half-haired kid is better, as well as some girl with a creation quirk. He would get very, very, very salty. And so, he would end up pretty much trying to press Izuku after school. However, before he could actually get to do that, Aizawa would step in the way and he would make sure that both of them don't do anything. They would go their opposite ways home and eventually the very next day would come around. On this specific day, everybody would be having an amazing day. Lunch would have just passed and now they're doing hero course training. However, it would be at this moment that the day would get even better. All Might would bust through the door and he would go on to say, I am here, coming into the door like a normal person. As from here, he goes on to introduce himself to the class. The class goes crazy and then he tells them about their hero suits. They all get suited up and eventually he would go on and do a raffle. This time around, I auto-generated it with a little random name wheel. And the opponent that Bakugo actually ended up getting was pretty anticlimactic, I'm not gonna lie. Bakugo doesn't end up being teamed up with Ida actually, but this time around gets teamed up with Uraraka. Not only that, but his opponent this time is now Todoroki and Mineta. And that's very strange because, I mean, let's be honest, Todoroki at this current point in the story could probably wipe the floor with Bakugo. Not only due to the fact that he could just freeze him, but because of the fact that the cold is anti-Bakugo's quirk. So it doesn't exactly help him out a lot in the long run. 
That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, what would pretty much end up happening because of this is that Bakugo during his test would actually get the floor wiped with him by Todoroki. And after all this would be said and done, he would realize that not only is he now behind Izuku, but now he is behind even Todoroki. He didn't even get the chance to use his gauntlets or anything like that. And now Bakugo is beginning to feel resentment and hatred towards not only Izuku, but towards Todoroki himself. He also ended up ruining any chances that he might have had with becoming friends, that's it, friends, with Araraka because of how rude he would have ended up treating her as well. And when it comes to Izuku, Izuku would have actually ended up getting matched up against um, Ida, luckily enough, and he would have also ended up getting matched up against Mina. However, his partner would have actually ended up being Invisible Girl because of the random generator. However, because of the fact that this time around Izuku was actually part of the villain team, once both of them ended up trying to make their way towards the direction of the bomb, Izuku normally, if he didn't have the Scarab with him, he never would have been able to notice Invisible Girl getting close to the bomb. However, due to the fact that he has heat vision, he could actually tell, he could actually, he, he could actually see, sorry, the heat signature coming off of Hagakuri's body. And so he was was able to just simply capture her and after that koji wasn't able to really do anything with his quirk which is just calling on animals so they ended up pretty much giving up and after that whole test would take place bakugo would be stunned at how easily deku managed to take out his opponents and he he failed he would have gotten all the praise from everybody and they would tell him that his his powers are amazing izuku would be having a great time and it's almost like their lives were flipped on their heads Bakugo, from the day that the teacher would have given out who's going to what school, everything just changed for him. His home life got harder because his mom, Mitsuki, stopped treating him like a king and instead of filling his head up with these ideas, she would try to humble him, which would actually re retroactively not exactly help Bakugo's casing as he was already not, um, not going to be fixed through just being you know beat across the head that way so it just didn't exactly end up helping too much or do what everybody wanted to happen and essentially about two days would pass eventually leading them all to be told about the usj and right now when the usj would pass Izawa would give everybody permission slips and they would all get them signed leading us to the day of the usj they would all be in the bus and oh by the way Ida's situation with him pretty much saving the class and telling everybody that it's just reporters that does happen however it is meaningless so we're not going to cover it and instead we just jump straight into all the students getting bombarded by the league of villains kurigiri would make his presence known immediately and he would teleport all the students that he could away Ida would still make his way towards all might and izuku upon being sent flying onto the water he would simply catch mineta and suyu seeing as both of them were thrown there as well land them on land obviously and then with his ability he would end up electroshocking the water by putting his blaster in it and letting a bunch of highly electrocuted voltage to just shoot in the water causing a bunch of the villains that were in there to be taken out swiftly a couple of them would have been able to take the damage but eventually once they try to rush over towards deku deku was able to use his flying abilities to go into the water himself and body these villains himself Eventually, after this would happen, I definitely can't see Izuku turning towards Aizawa and seeing him having to take out on as many villains as he is currently and wanting to go in and help. So, that's what he does. Izuku would immediately rush in the way and he would begin to help out a ton with Aizawa. They would both be back to back and Izuku using his thrusters, he would begin taking villain after villain out. Eventually it would lead to the point where he would create a hammer in his hand and he would begin clobbering these villains. Eventually leading Izuku to using more and more tactics and measures and eventually he would create some sort of halo looking gun on his arms that kind of looks like the ones that the little aliens would use with like the little needles off of it, it like shoots needles. He would shoot those at the villains and he would take take them out very very swiftly eventually izuku would then be like face to face with this gigantic nomu which would stand right in front of him and he would punch down at his head however izuku using his arms would block it and he would say you know i thought you'd be a lot stronger it'd be at this point that shigaraki would begin monologuing and telling everybody and their mothers about what the nomu is and what powers it has and upon izuku hearing what powers it has he would be shocked then the nomu would punch him in the stomach and send him flying back izuku turning towards the nomu would not be having a very good time seeing as he's not exactly happy at the fact that this nomu is even posing half of a threat to himself so izuku is not having it and what izuku would do is he would go on to essentially decide that nah 
he ain't gonna have this type of disrespect. Izuku would immediately go all out, deciding that this thing is not even alive and it can regenerate no more games. Izuku would immediately go on to create two machine guns in his hand and he would aim it at the direction of the nomu letting it fly just destroying the nomu's little pieces but eventually it would just regenerate and izuku would realize that he's going to be needing something a lot bigger than that so he would combine both arms to create a massive cannon and he would shoot an explosion straight at the nomu the bro basically shot a kamehameha at it and it would leave a pretty big sizable crater leaving nothing behind of the nomu shigaraki would be stunned and it'd be at this point that izuku would fly over towards shigaraki and punch him one good time to the face shigaraki would be sent onto the floor and he would try to grab onto deku with his hand however deku would stomp on his hand and tell him that he's not going to be hurting anybody else and shigaraki would then you know just get kicked in the head once more completely passing out leading kuragiri to realize that there's nothing left he can do so he teleports away with all the rest of the villains that he could gather and shigaraki is ultimately thrown into tartarus with his quirk being restrained and shigaraki never truly becoming the successor that all for one always wanted all for one would be very irritated due to the fact that shigaraki his prized possession didn't end up working out however he would hear word about a certain individual in Yue High that didn't seem like a hero. A bunch of villain, one villain actually made it out from Bakugo's section and he was able to be teleported away by Kuragiri and he would tell them that he was more like a villain than any other villain in the league. So All For One would definitely keep his eyes and ears open for Katsuki Bakugo. But ultimately what would end up happening after this is we would have a one week break from school and they would all have another week to train. Izuku would use this time to spend it with Nezu and to ultimately improve his relationship with Kajida and brainstorm new ideas and creations that he can use as Blue Beetle. After the break, Izuku would find himself right in the middle of the UA Sports Festival. And who other than him was going to be giving the speech? Nobody. After this, he would then go on to get ready right at the starting line as Midnight was just about to blow the starter's pistol. She would do so and immediately upon hearing that, Izuku and Kajida would link as it would be almost as if they finally became symbiotic, a perfect match. And Izuku would fly off easily, blitzing past Todoroki, towards Bakugo, towards Ida, blitzing them, absolutely destroying the competition. Flying there to the finish line, Izuku would immediately get first place, and for the next portion, which would be the cavalry race, I'm not going to cover it, I, I really don't like doing the cavalry race, okay, just let's just say that everybody who passed in the original passes, because like, I couldn't be bothered, right, and the next match that Izuku is actually going to be having to face off is going to be against Shinso for round one. Now, in the original, Izuku does get caught off guard because he speaks back to Shinso. However, this time around, Kajida can actually control Izuku if he were to ever be mind controlled or something like that. So, yeah. When Izuku does ultimately speak back to Shinso and get mind controlled, Kajida would easily be able to take Shinso out and thus end the entire mind control process. And Shinso would be stunned, and Izuku would tell him that, you know, He's kind of, he has a symbiotic quirk. If he's ever unconscious, his symbiotic other character inside of him can take over. So he just got a bad matchup. But he would go on to congratulate Shinzo and tell him like he did great making it this far. And go on to tell him that if that was anybody else, he would have definitely beat them. And Shinzo would kind of get a little bit of an energy boost because of that. But not really considering he just lost. So yeah. Pretty much what would end up going down afterwards is that Izuku would find himself against Todoroki. Now, in this battle specifically, Todoroki would immediately try to just freeze him. And this time around, he doesn't even go on to Izuku to say, Oh, are you all my secret love chat? None of that. Nope. Shinso got obliterated, and so does Todoroki. Todoroki, upon freezing Izuku inside of this gigantic block of ice, Izuku would like let Kajita just go crazy and he would let out a massive amount of energy from his body shattering the ice as he flies towards Shodor Todoroki and he would just punch him in the face over and over and over and over and Todoroki would shoot flames at the direction of Izuku trying to get him to let him go but Izuku just wouldn't because the flames wouldn't be able to hurt Izuku he would fly him up to the point where Todoroki would have a, a hard time breathing and he's just like trying his absolute best to try to breathe he's like <gasps> you know what i mean 
but Izuku would just look at Todoroki and say, this is about as high as he can take him, as he drops Todoroki, and Todoroki would just be looking down at the ground thinking this is it, but Izuku would fly down, grab Todoroki, and let him land gently on the ground, as Todoroki would cough out some blood, spit, and throw up on the ground as well. Todoroki from here would look up towards Izuku and realize that he is in a completely different league. Whatever that power is that he has, Izuku is too strong. And Izuku would be getting all the praise and everything and everybody would be calling him such a good sportsman because of the fact that he like he literally lifts up his opponents after beating them. However, ultimately, right as this would happen, Izuku would make his way towards the back rooms where he would prepare for his final battle against Katsuki Bakugo. Before the battle would start, Bakugo would shoulder check Izuku and when Izuku would say, do you mind? Bakugo would say, not at all, Deku. Make sure that you're ready for what used to happen back when we were in middle school, because I'm gonna destroy you. Todoroki's just dumb. He doesn't know how to fight, but I do. As from here, Izuku would say, but didn't he destroy you? And Bakugo would just grit his teeth as he would walk away, and Izuku would smirk, thinking to himself that Bakugo's finally gonna get humbled right now. But ultimately, what would end up going down is that Bakugo would go on to get into the ring with Izuku, and this battle, this battle, sorry, not battle, but this battle would not go down at all like what everyone was expecting. Because Bakugo would actually pose somewhat of a challenge to Izuku. And who else would be watching none other than All for One, who would actually be in the stands? He would have snuck in somehow, using... Kurigiri's teleportation quirk, but he's just watching. Bakugo using his abilities would shoot a left hook explosion at Deku's face which would catch him off guard and then he would shoot a right hook sending Deku flying back, almost off the arena had it not been for his flight. Izuku comes right back in, flies and tries to catch Izu uh, Bakugo off guard by flying him up into the atmosphere, but Bakugo would just punch and punch and punch at Deku's face. And Bakugo would just sit there, blood covering his lips as he just got punched over and over by Izuku himself as well, but he just doesn't care. It's like, it's like Bakugo's hungrier for this W and he just keeps punching and punching. And ultimately, he shoots an explosion at one of the like left regions of Deku's stomach and like Kajira would say immense damage, uh, you know, to the, to the, to the area, you know, whatever. And, you know, Izuku will then have one of his wings like ripped off by Bakugo as he shoots an explosion into it and Deku and himself would both be hurtling towards the ground. Bakugo, as of this moment, would then go on to like land on top of Izuku and Izuku's mask would have shattered in that process. Izuku from here would then look at Bakugo with like there's no damage on his face because the mask broke and it tanked the impact so Deku's just fine there's no bleeding the whole mask did come off unfortunately but Izuku from here would then go on to turn towards Bakugo and ask him why in the world he took it so far and Bakugo just stays silent he just rushes back in and Deku would be tired of Bakugo so he he's like you know what Bakugo I was trying to play mess your nice guy but I guess you won't let me so from here on out, Izuku would then say, Kajida, let's go. As from here, he would create a hammer in one hand and a sword in another as he would punch Bakugo Shure in his gut and then he would pierce Bakugo on the side of, the, of his face, like leaving a, a nice little scar in his face as Bakugo then would get kicked off the stage by Deku who would say that he should have never matched up against him and that should he should have been more kind to him back in the day because maybe he wouldn't be looking up to him right now if he had just treated him like a normal human maybe they could be on equal terms but bakugo would just like look up at izuku and would say i hate you deku and i promise someday i'm gonna kill you you don't deserve that power deku i do i'm gonna kill you for it deku i promise you i will and it'd be at this moment that a purple mist would cover Bakugo's body as he would look at Deku and say, what the? And Deku would try to grab Bakugo, even though like he just heard that from him. He's still like, he's still not going to let Bakugo get taken by something, right? But Bakugo would fall into the mist and immediately the U.S. Sports Festival would be shut down as people all over the stage would have just taken a video of everything that just happened and like clips of Bakugo saying he's gonna kill a hero student would begin to go viral. Bakugo's chances of becoming a hero would completely have been ended and now Bakugo would find himself in front of All For One himself, being convinced of the fact that he should join the League of Villains. 
Bakugo would look up only to see All for One and he would tell him to join him. He could give him even more power. More power than that kid has. And, you know, All for One would laugh and go on to explain that he could truly make him a, a powerful, powerful being. And, you know, Bakugo would go on to say that, you know, that's all he wants. However, he's going to become a hero and he doesn't give a damn. Like, just because he hates Deku doesn't mean he's going to become a hero. He's going to become a villain, you know. But then All for One says, a hero? <laughs> You, a hero, with this clip going viral, Bakugo, your chances of becoming a hero are zero. As he would show him it, and Bakugo would be stunned. He sees himself being like angry and rageful, and he's like, I didn't even mean it. It just came out. I was just angry. And all for one says, well, it looks like to me, all these millions of people seem to believe that you meant it. So your chances of becoming a hero are gone. Join me and I can give you power. I can give you the ability to put that kid on the bottom of your foot. He took down my successor. So why don't you become the new one? With your power, your tactics, your skill. With my quirks that I can give you access to. You can become a powerhouse, Kotsky. Trust me. And from here, Bakugo would look at all for one. Take his hand and say, You know what? I have nothing to lose. I guess I... I guess I'll join you. Eventually, we would then get ourselves into a slight time skip. One that would be a lot longer than the one that we get in the anime. Because this time around, the school would actually shut down for two months. Due to the fact that UA gets a lot of flag. Due to the fact that Katsuki, a UA student, was not only taken. But a lot of people presume that he has become a villain. And there has been some very strong evidence suggesting that he has turned to the not so good side and Yue got a ton of flag for that however fortunately Katsuki's mom she would have ended up being able to put in just enough of a good word the students would have been able to say that you know it wasn't always like that and that you know it might have just been a misunderstanding you know Katsuki Katsuki had his you know things in the past but they tried to change him but I guess it just didn't work you know and eventually Yue would finally be able to get back up and running and on its feet this would lead all of the students to return and eventually their work study events would finally end up taking place, their internships. And so what would end up pretty much going down is that everybody would go with their usual internships. However, Izuku doesn't actually go with Gran Torino and Ida's brother has actually been dead for quite a bit so he didn't have the chance to go with Emmanuel and go get himself killed. With all the flack that UA was going with, he finally realized that doing something that dumb would probably not put the school in a good position and so he just lets bygones be bygones wishing that he can do something about the hero killer, however that's not something he's going to be able to do soon. The hero killer ultimately ends up joining the League of Villains and so now they have access to a much more powerful member and not only that, but Katsuki Bakugo would get a lot more powerful. During this time, Izuku would have ended up taking his own internship with Nezu personally, and those two months would have actually also been used to train with Nezu, in which during this time, Izuku would actually train his normal body, learning how to fight, learning combat maneuvers, strengthening himself even more than he already was, and beginning to even make a better relationship with Kajida. Things would be looking up for the series, but... Unfortunately for everybody, they wouldn't be realizing this, but All For One's no moves would be getting a lot more powerful just as fast, and Kotsky would end up getting a surgery performed on his body, which would lead him to be able to attain nine corks, just like the villain, nine, from the My Hero Academia movie. And so, what would pretty much end up going down is that Kotsky would get access to some very, very busted quirks. However, those are something that I would love to save for later. And one of the quirks that he gets access to is a quirk that allows him to create weapons that he can think of. Another one, which, you know, I'm probably guessing you guys have thought of, would be a flight quirk, an amplification quirk. And due to the fact that he already has his explosion quirk, that would count as one. That means that he only has five more special quirks that I'm not telling you guys about. But trust me, it's going to be wor well worth it for the surprise that I've got. But anyways, continuing forward with the story, everything would be going good until eventually it's not. 
The final exams would have passed and Izuku would have ended up getting matched up against All Might. Luckily for Izuku, the Scarab was more than enough to match up against All Might's One For All current strength level. And even though Mirio was the successor of One For All, that's not like Izuku's facing off against Mirio. He's facing off against um, Out of Prime All Might. So when the battle would go on to take place, Izuku would be able, through hard work and determination, be able to take out the number one hero not too difficult with, with not too much difficulty actually and so what would pretty much end up going down is that we would end up getting a very very cool scene in which all might kind of has a little bit of a passing of the torch moment with izuku and mirio telling them both that they're going to be the greatest heroes ever and so izuku would get a bunch of praise from his classmates and we would eventually end up getting ourselves into the position of waiting for the forest training arc now, eventually we would find ourselves on the bus, and it would be here that Izuku and the rest of the classmates would be taken off, only to be thrown off the mountainside by Mandalay and them to finally invest a bit of time into their own personal training. Izuku and everybody else would be doing so, and eventually the Coda situation would go down. Now, Forest training camp would pretty much go down just like in the original, however Izuku's training is going to be slightly different, so that is the only change. And that also does mean that when Muscular pulls up, Izuku is going to be there with Kota luckily. So, as for that, Izuku would be more than capable enough of wiping the floor with Bakugo. And because of that, Izuku would do an amazing job and he would easily be able to take out Bak or sorry, not Bakugo, but Muscular and would easily send him flying off the cliff with a hammer smack to the face, which would actually send him flying up into the air only for Izuku to fly, grab him with the scarab wings and then eventually shoot a full powered blaster at his face, causing Muscular's other eye to be impaired completely completely and for muscular to be KO'd. This would eventually lead Izuku to flying Koda over towards the direction of where Aizawa is located and eventually he would make his way through the forest rushing in wondering if everybody else is safe. It'd be at this moment that from the corner of his eye, he would notice a red beam being shot right at him. And before Izuku could dodge, the beam would hit him, sending him flying through five trees. Izuku would finally get up and realize that the person in front of him has dusty, dirty, blonde hair. It's long and it's, it's Bakugo. He would look up and Bakugo would look down on him saying, I told you I'd get you here. I told you I'd get you here, Deku. You weren't worthy of that thing. That power that chose you. You should have just stayed beneath my feet. And now, I have to become a villain. Because with you taking my spot, my dream, now I had to resort to this. But you know what, Deku? I actually gotta thank you a bit. Without you, I would have never found my true calling. This... It's almost like it's too perfect. I mean, my quirk is villainous after all, right? That is what some people used to tell me. Unless, until eventually I shut them up with an explosion. <laughs> Guess you were kind of right. I always was cut out to be a villain. Right, Deku? As from here, Izuku would look at him and say, Bakugo, you got it all wrong. I, I never meant to take your place. I just, I just always wanted to be a hero alongside you. I was never in competition with you, it was one-sided. And from here, Katsuki would shoot a full power explosion at Deku's face, sending him flying once more, as Deku would say, come on Bakugo, I'm not trying to fight. But Bakugo would look up and say, it's too late for that. You decided to fight me the day that you fought back in class and you embarrassed me. It was from that day that everything with my mom changed, everything with my school changed, everything in my life changed. And now, you're gonna know what it's like to suffer, Deku. As from here, he would blitz towards him, and Deku would then get into a full, like, full-on battle with Bakugo. Bakugo from here would smirk and say, you know, Deku, things aren't quite as simple as they were last time. His eyes would glow red, and his anger would cause him to get even stronger by the second. Izuku would then begin to be pushed back, and Bakugo would throw a full-powered punch with an explosion alongside it, smashing the left side of Deku's face causing Deku to pretty much be forced, or sorry, not the left side, but the right side um, of Deku's face, causing Deku to ultimately have half of his face exposed and for him to get angrier and angrier by the second. 
It would be at this moment that Kajida would begin to inform him that his armor is failing. However, Deku does not care. Like, it's almost like he goes into a full blinding rage and he remembers everything. Everything that Bakugo did to him. Every mean thing he ever said. Every insult. Every time he pushed him around. Every time he made him feel worthless. Every time that he told them to just give up on being a hero. Deku stands right back up and through a rage lets out a battle cry that would be worthy of scaring anybody. And Bakugo once he hears this would say, what? Don't tell me you think you're going to beat me. What is this, some sort of joke? And from here, Bakugo would slam his head on the ground as he absorbs the life energy around him, and this would cause Bakugo to get even more amped, causing Bakugo to have just as much kinetic energy inside of him to be able to match Izuku's 100% at this moment. Izuku from here would go in and throw a full-powered swing of a sword as Bakugo would create one mid-air and they would both clash Deku and Bakugo would both be going at it as hard as possible, and Bakugo would look at him smirk and say, This is the end, Deku! And from here, Izuku would be on the back foot, and he would just scream, Kajida! As it would be at this moment that more power would come to his suit and his armor, and Izuku would begin to slightly begin to get an upper hand. They're finally back to 50-50, when suddenly... Todoroki would come flying in, luckily getting access to use his quirk, and so he would shoot a full flame blast at Bakugo, letting Izuku actually slash down his sword and weaken Bakugo, and Bakugo from here would shoot a full powered explosion AP shot beam at Todoroki, which Todoroki would try to block with ice, however it would puncture his lung and Todoroki would fall to the ground. Bakugo from here would go on to say that he needed to pay him back for the embarrassment at the sports for the embarrassment during the 2v2 battle, sorry. And Izuku would say he has to be kidding. He was he didn't even he didn't even do anything wrong. He just won. And then Bakugo would say, and that's the problem. You think you think I was just gonna let you get away with it, Deku? <laughs> You think I was just going to let you walk away after the humiliation? My dreams were crushed. I heard what my mom said about me. You know what? All from one's right. Nothing in this world matters but power. And you, Deku, you don't have any. Without that damn bug, you wouldn't be anything. But luckily, you got that. And that just means that it's going to be so much more fun when I tear it out of your back and I rip you in half. As Deku would look up at Bakugo and he would realize that all his damage that he would have got from Bakugo, the damage that he got from the sword strike, it was completely gone. Everything, everything was gone. Izuku would just look up at Bakugo and he just, he just feels such, such pain. It'd be at this moment that Izuku would realize that he created a monster and now it's his job to fix it. So through one more warrior cry, Izuku would form a sword. The suit would go max power. Nothing is going to be left after this. So Izuku has one shot at this. And Bakugo would smirk saying, Come on, Deku. It would be at this moment that Izuku would get back into a sword clash with Bakugo. And then Bakugo would say, You didn't really think you could beat me. You're weak, Deku. But it would be at this moment that he would say, I am weak. But we are not. As from here, himself and Kaji that go full power and they would manage to be able to put Bakugo on the back foot. Suddenly, Izuku would say, do it now, Kaji da, as his suit would expel all of its max power, meaning the suit's going to have to regenerate for like a week or two weeks if we're being real, right? So he would shoot a full power beam explosion Kamehameha wave that would leave a crater so massive and it would obliterate Bakugo. Deku would immediately fall into unconsciousness and he would wake up in a hospital one month later only to realize that or sorry not one month but one week later only to realize everything that had happened and for everybody to talk to him and ask him about how that battle went down. Izuku would let tears come out and he would say that he had to do what he had to do. Bakugo became a monster and he would say that he's sure not even Bakugo would have wanted to see himself that way. Everybody would tell Izuku that they understand why he did it and no one's going to find out about it as the hero school already covered it up. Izuku would say, no, nah, no, nah, 
I'm not going to do that. I think that everybody has a right to know. And then All Might would come in the building and say that he understands what he's going through. That the person who was actually responsible for mind controlling that kid was all for one. That same day, he had a fallout battle with him as well. And he was finally able to put him into cuffs. They were going to decide to just arrest him, but then All Might decided that it probably wouldn't have been a good idea. He also lost his cool, and let's just say that All For One won't be bothering anyone else ever again. He would look down and say he understands why he did it, that even though they all hate to admit it, sometimes lives have to be taken for the greater good. And Izuku would look at them, and, you know... Even even Kotsky's mom would walk in and through tears she would hug Deku saying that she's so sorry he had to see her son like that. That she's just lucky she never saw that. It'd be at this moment that Izuku would ask her why she's not upset at him. And she would say that that's not what he would have ever wanted either way. So she's glad that she'll miss her son but she'll live. And it'd be at this moment that Izuku would just, he would have a huge weight lifted off his chest. And now, he can go back to living his dream. But this time, it won't just be for himself. It'll be for Bakugo too. For both of them. It's almost like he'll be living Bakugo's dream through himself. <laughs> Imagine that. Deku and Baku go together. And if you guys want to see something like that, you can go check out my newest video. I'm just kidding. I don't have a video like that. But I do have a video called, uh, What If Deku and Baku Go Fused? It's, it's a banger. I mean, it came out such a long time ago. I'm thinking of revamping it sometime in the future. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But yeah, if you guys want to see some sort of fusion between Deku and Baku Go, check it out. It's on the channel. That said, that has been it for today's video, y'all. I love y'all. Peace.